What is going on guys? My name's Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. Today I just want to do a quick video for you guys talking about the best bourbons from 2018. Now I didn't start my channel until late November of 2018, so I had a very brief window to do this video for you guys. Um, I did want to at least put something out talking about the options that were out there for 2018, and um, I did extensive research watching other videos, other YouTubers, reading articles um, from the experts just to see what their opinions were on the best bourbon for 2018. So I just want to put something out for you guys so you at least have a, a reference point. Um, Jason over at the Mash and Drum did a great top five bourbons of 2018 review. He actually used bottles he was able to taste and try throughout the year. Um, because I this channel is only a couple months old, I really didn't have those options to get those bottles and try them for you guys. But I at least wanted to talk about it and um, also talk about some of my favorites that I actually do have in my own collection. So let's go ahead and start with number five. Number five on my list is actually going to be the Booker's 201804 Kitchen Table. Now I actually only got this bourbon about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, and it really blew me away. Um, the flavor profiles in, in this are classic Jim Beam. If you guys are a fan of Booker's products, it's a great expression from Jim Beam. I get a lot of creaminess and smoothness on this bourbon. It's got a classic bourbon profile with your vanilla, caramel, brown sugar. Great flavor, great mouthfeel. Because I've only had it a, a month, maybe two months, I haven't given it too much of a chance to open up yet. I'm interested to see once I drink the bottle down a little more if the flavors are going to change at all, if it'll get better or worse. So I'll report back to you guys and let you know about that. But overall, the 201804 Kitchen Table was a fantastic product. I would definitely recommend you buy it if you guys can still find it in early 2019. All right, so number four on my list is actually a bourbon I was not able to try this year, but it is the 2018 William LaRue Weller release. Now, of course, Weller is part of the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection, and it's one of their most sought-after, best expressions that are available. I've heard incredible things about this bourbon. Watching people who have tasted it try it say it's just phenomenal. I wish I was able to get this, this bottle for myself. It's one of the Bose bourbons that are on my bucket list. Um, one of my unicorn bottles I'd love to find. Unfortunately, I don't want to be paying $700 to get it. Maybe sometime I'll get a sample, but overall that that bottle is supposed to be fantastic. So this year's William Lou Weller was really described by many to be an incredible bourbon. Some of the tasting notes I've come across when watching reviews of people who have done this are just an intense caramel flavor. Of course, those classic weeded bourbon bready notes just elevated to another level with the William Lou Weller though. Great vanilla on the nose and on the palate. And a lot of people actually said they got some dried fruit with honey flavors um, with, the, with the Weller this year. All those are incredible flavors, and it just sounds delicious. I'm just picturing the 107 just amped up, amplified. And th that, that'd be a bourbon that's right in up my wheelhouse that I would love to try someday. All right, guys, so moving on to number three on my list of top five bourbons of 2018. I actually went with another Booker's release, so this is the 201801 Kathleen's Batch. Now this was a really tough decision between the Kathleen's Batch and the Kitchen Table Batch. Both of them were just incredible. It's really hard putting them one ahead of another, but I actually did do a blind review of these two, and I'm not sure if I put that out for you guys yet, but um, it will be coming soon. And in that video... Um, Kathleen's batch did come out a little bit ahead of the uh, kitchen table, which surprised me because when I tried them both individually, I really thought the kitchen table was superior to the Kathleen's batch. But doing them blind, I, I got a completely different result. So stay tuned for that video, guys. It's going to be a good one. But the Kathleen's batch this year is the 201801. This is a much fruitier Booker's batch than previous releases, in my opinion. So more dried fruit on the nose, kind of a, a, a rich, dark caramel vanilla. Still that Jim Beam nuttiness, just like the kitchen table had. With the kitchen table, it was more of a smoky note to me, though. 
the Kathleen's batch just has that great citrus fruit flavor that I really like in bourbon personally. Um, so if you're into that type of flavor profile, the Kathleen's batch was great. I've heard great things about all four batches that were released this year, but for me, I had to put Kathleen's batch at number three on my list. All right, number two, guys, for me, this may come as a surprise and a shock to a lot of you guys, but I actually went with the Old Forester 1920 Prohibition style. Now, there may be better bourbons out there um, throughout the country, but I haven't tried it personally. 1920 is something I was able to get my hands on, drink it all the time. I've actually got a bottle right over here, and it is just an incredible bourbon. This is going to run you about $60, and for the price, you really can't beat that. $60, and it's 115 proof, part of Old Forester's Whiskey Row series. It's just a terrific bourbon. So with the 1920 guys, I always get heavy dried fruit, heavy cherry notes in it. Also get a, a very chocolatey sweetness, which is really good to me. It tastes like a chocolate-covered cherry when you're drinking this bourbon. It comes in at 115 proof, and it drinks so much smoother than that even. It's perfect the way it is. You don't have to add any water to it. I know this isn't one of the, the rarest, hardest-to-find bourbons out there, but for my personal top five, I think this definitely deserves to be near the top. All right, guys, so coming in at number one on my top five bourbons of 2018 is the George T. Stag, so another Buffalo Trace Antique Collection product. Again, I wasn't able to get my hands on a full bottle of this. I searched everywhere trying to find anything uh, Buffalo Trace Antique Collection related. Wasn't able to do it, but I was fortunate enough to actually get a sample of this from a buddy, and it is just delicious. I've always been a barrel-proof, full-proof, barrel-strength fan myself, and I've always been a Stag Junior fan. Um, I, again, I was never able to get my hands on a full bottle of the George T. Stag, but I'll tell you, the George T. Stag from 2018 this year is just a great bourbon. It's got the age, the oak notes come through, dark fruit. You still get the same classic profile that you do with Stag Junior and really with a lot of Buffalo Trace products where you're getting the rich caramel, rich vanilla that all those barrel proofs usually have. It's got dried fruit, chocolatey notes. I actually pick up some leather notes and some tobacco notes in the George T. Stag as well. It's just such a complex whiskey. I wish I had more than just a sample. I wish I could go back to it once the bottle's been open for a while. I'm really going to be making sure I pick up hopefully the entire antique collection next year. Um, just after having a sample of the Stag, it's, I know it's all always hyped up. Um, every year it's hyped up, but... It was truly an incredible bourbon for me. All right, so just a couple honorable mentions from 2018 as well. I picked up a Henry McKenna 10-year, and that actually won the San Francisco Spirits Award for um, Best Single Barrel Bourbon. And the Henry McKenna, at least the batch I had, was fantastic. It was a delicious product. I've had three different bottles of McKenna since I started into bourbon probably about a year, year and a half ago. And... Two of them were great. The third one, average, not not that fantastic, I guess. But the the one I had this time, I don't remember the, the specs on the bottle. If I can find it, I'll, I'll put it up here for you guys. But it was just great, a single barrel expression. And it, it was just something that was so such a classic bourbon, and it had a nice sweetness that I personally love in, in my bourbon. So... Another great bourbon that almost cracked my top five this year was the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, and this was the C918. So I personally have always been a fan of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It was one of the first barrel proofs I ever bought, and at the time I was like, wow, this is the best bourbon I've ever had. And it still holds fairly true. It's definitely up there as one of the, one of the best bourbons um, I have had the chance to try. Something about the C batches with Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, those seem to be better to me. I just get better flavors out of it. There's so much barrel influence in the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It gives you those rich bourbon flavors that I've already talked about with you guys. It's just so good. Anytime you can pick up an Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, I'll always say try to get it and definitely pick it up and try it, especially if you've never had it before. 
If you can find a C batch specifically, the C917 or the C918, which was this year's release, definitely get it because that was my favorite. All right, guys, well, I know that was just a quick video for you all. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below what your favorite bourbon of 2018 was. What bourbon are you most looking forward to coming up in 2019? Next year, I'm going to have a much more in-depth video for you guys. I'm going to be able to hopefully pick up all the bottles, give you a more extensive review. This time, I had to just go by other people's opinions, some of my own, of course, and I included some things that I personally tried just because I have had, had them myself. So let me know down in the comments below, guys, what were some of your favorite bourbons of 2018, some honorable mentions, maybe something in the top five that I left off my personal list. Let me know down below. Please like and subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming for you in 2019. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for watching the video today, guys. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and that subscribe button. Also, follow me on Instagram at BourbonSane and Facebook BourbonSane.